for the session. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and get started. Before I as before I get started, let me stop the share. Let me go ahead and make some general comments. I'm not going to do the stuff I did before. Not that I, I'm not going to repeat much. I'm going to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, but really, it's the time to um, uh, get ready to send them off, even if they're local to college. Uh, uh, later in the meeting, I'll remind myself where on each. Each one of you have schools where I wish I could just tell you stuff. Maybe what you should kind of pencil in. Sister Katrina, I already got you, I think. But if you want to know some things in particular about your schools, there's a lot going on at colleges. I often wonder how to keep you informed. Um, so much stuff is happening. I wish I could clone myself. Um, some of you might want to have, give me a quick call this week. I'll take your call. And I want to make sure that, um, that I tell you the things that are happening at your schools. Um, you all sent your colleges to me, but I just got all that information from a lot of you. So I haven't had time to prepare, but call me before you go away to school. Uh, there's some things I may want to let you know about our people. I may want you to talk to just make a little time Shoot me an email, maybe an email will work. I love to answer email. Just any way you can get it to me so we can have a personal conversation. If you want to hang back today, since we're ending so early, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, we can all kind of talk about things happen at schools we learn. I make that a general period and we can talk, okay? But there's a lot of things happening at schools as I look around here that I wish I could just tell you uh, individually. Maybe you'll get a hold of me. All right, let's go ahead and um, get started. I got some people who get ready literally to go out the door, catch a plane literally. All right, okay. Uh, <clears throat> we're, we're launching a new program and actually Bishop gave me the idea and I told him he did. He said, I don't, whatever I said, do it, whatever. Uh, but we wanna give better support to our alums. Our alums, the minute they graduate from high school, <clears throat> forget my voice, it's the sinus time of year, it's down there. Um, they become alums of our program. So here we have a class of 2020 and 2021 going away to school. And there's some support things we're now gonna do because I have the staffing and the talent. And during the pandemic lockdown, we've been preparing this super program for our alumni students. I wanna thank you all. We had a record number of registrations, over 80 families registered, including 12 core members of West Angeles, most we ever had. Uh, so we're gonna be able to stay in good touch with you about things happening for your student during the school year. Uh, uh, we call, it's kind of like, here's the description of it. It's college alumnus career, academic and college success support. It's dependent on your youth's engagement with our team. We want, we're gonna be reaching out and engaging them by email, text, uh, social media, all different ways. We want them to reach back to us. Just remind them that we'll be doing that. Uh, early in the process was sort of try to let you know, we want them to engage us because we have a lot of different things we wanna cover with them, you'll see. First of all, there's a timeline for our pre-campus support and that's ending because we only have two additional sessions. I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, the session with Corliss will be cut down to an hour and a half on a night during the week. We will be recording this session, but a lot of you know there's nothing like being in the Divas live presence, even if it's online. Uh, we will record it, we'll make it available people who are gone to campus, but a lot of people will want to join us live on YouTube or other ways. We'll talk about that. Sponsorship award applications are going to go out mid-September. You might wonder, we just, some of you wonder, well, we just did that. Well, no, you 2020 students got your award. Now they're continuing students. It's 2021 now. So we're going to do uh, our regular sponsorship period. Normally, we did not give sponsorships to non-members, meaning continuing awards. I'm sorry, continuing sponsorships to non-members. Those of you who are members, they will have a chance for that. We just won't be able to award to mid-September. We're assembling a team, a committee, a temporary committee right now. And the awards will be made in one check for the whole year rather than the two uh, semester checks like we've done in the past. We will do something for our 2020 non-member award winners. We've not made a proposal yet on how. We don't know the level of funding but it will all be based on attendance to these upcoming sessions, plus your previous attendance. That's why I told uh, Sister uh, Katrina not to worry. Um, I mean, she, for example, is, I think we looked, she's been probably in 80 to 90%, probably 90% of the sessions, Sister Katrina. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, same thing with, um, and the ones that are worrying the most about it have the great 
that had the best attendance. So uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Um, we'll do something for our non-members, those of you that just got awards for 2020. We'll figure out something to do for you for 2021, but everything is shifted later because we're just so behind on the award process uh, because of the pandemic. And now, uh, uh, now that's uh, coming back, but not in the way it was before, most you're still going to campus. Mm -hmm. Hold on just a minute, my Alexa tried to talk to me. Okay, registration as a high school graduate. We're gonna want our students to, let me see if, if Christine, are you here yet? Did she come and slip in here? Let me see, she's not here, not yet, okay. Well, she will be here. You've already registered um, as, as the parent, as a high school graduate, thank you very much. I think everybody in here has or is going to do it. I seems to me, um, but you need to do that because this year, the church, who doesn't really bug me on budgeting that much, I usually get reasonable requests. Um, but I've had to add some staff. And in order to justify the team that I put together, I added uh, Ricardo, and I want to let him continue on working during the school year to do nothing but alumni support. Uh, so that's why I'm asking, asked you to register. Some of you registered two or three times. That's fine. We got to figure it out. But uh, if there's anyone here who's not registered, uh, please make a note at the end of the meeting uh, to let me know. We'll get to send you that link when Christina shows up. But there's a second thing we're going to ask students to do. Let me let this person in. Um, I should say that again. All right, uh, you all, everybody here, maybe a couple of you haven't, saw my email last week and you went online and you registered. We got up to 80 people. We already had 45 uh, that have said, hey, yes, uh, please uh, provide some alumni support for my student, meaning when they're at the campus, include them on things. You'll hear more of what we're doing in a minute. Academic support. We're going to offer academic support to college students in the form of Saturday math workshops. Workshops, uh, math is sometimes a challenge for students. I'm going to have my best math people plus me available for an hour and a half to two hours <clears throat> each Saturday morning beginning the week of September 7th to provide online support for students who want to work different math problems. We've gotten really good at online. We have some great graphic tools and some great other tools we use to help students learn math. We want to use that with college students. We've gotten really smart with that in the last year. Campus assistance guidance. We think we can help your students by guiding them to the right resources on the campus or if you're not sure where to send them. Um, because a lot of you did not have on-campus orientations. And we're really concerned because of that, parents won't be able to know what to tell students to do. And students won't know because they haven't been on the campus. They did virtual too, but now they're going in some cases. But we can many times provide assistance by telling them who they can talk to. This is all the things that your registration with us uh, um, online, that registration link we gave you, will accomplish for you. Career assistance programs. Wow, more than ever before, we have employers that are standing by with uh, internship programs directly linked to us. We have two uh, major uh, hiring organizations who are hiring people that have trouble, you know, right now, I don't know if you follow the news, but a lot of employers are having trouble hiring uh, because of the way we've rewarded a lot of people for not working. There's a lot of great openings for college students to do internships and get involved. A lot of companies have shifted that way to develop employees for the future because of that. But we're, we're really in touch with that process. So all this is stuff that because you registered your student with us, the 2020s, you're already in there, don't worry. <laughs> the 2021 parents who registered recently, are re it's really gonna be helpful to you, okay? All right. Let's see. Uh, I should, okay, yeah, that's good, okay. And here's the upcoming activities I said I would talk about. And this is uh, where uh, I think you're waiting for since Katrina. We have the August 18th event with Dr. Bennett. It's during the week, it's online only. Uh, we will record the session. I really would like to have an audience for us still online. Uh, we'll do it on YouTube Live as well. Watch your email. But well, YouTube Live is just easier for people who are on travel and wanna tap in. I have some that are gonna be logging in from universities. One student at Boise State, for example, already told me to send me the YouTube link. It's just easier to go on the YouTube. And we do have a YouTube channel in case you guys weren't aware. If you ever wanna join our YouTube channel and subscribe to it and get our videos, 
just go to you know our website www.westa-eep.org uh, and as soon as I get some help with you we'll put it on there for you. Uh, you want to go on there wait for the banner at the top and I'll show you how to link to our YouTube page. Please subscribe to our channel and also like it. Uh, we're now getting over 3,000 views a week of our videos. I'm sorry, every other week of our videos, which means we're in a position to be able to monetize. And that's another way of holding down the cost of the program. We're not charging at all for the alumni program. Uh, one way you can help us by liking and subscribing to our channel and then viewing periodically videos so that builds our viewership up and then YouTube will monetize us, uh, and it would mean to send us a, a cut of the advertising dollars that they receive because they're using our content more and more than counting ads on ours. And that's stuff we can monetize. So please uh, think about joining our YouTube. But anyway, we're going to do this live on YouTube, uh, this meeting with Dr. Corliss uh, Bennett McBride. All right. Uh, on Sunday, August 21st, by the way, that should be Saturday. Here I go again. This is Saturday, August 21st, and I know the time is weird. It's 5.30 to 7.15. Again, it's online, and again, it will be recorded, but it's the ceremony. We have some special things we want you to do to prepare for it. I know it's a Saturday night. I never do things Saturday night, but it'll be over pretty early. We'll probably beat the 7.15, um, and even for people who are traveling back east, they may still need to be able to participate in that. Again, it'll be on YouTube Live. Uh, this is uh, Katrina. This is all the stuff I was going to tell you. September 15th, uh, we'll have we moved that date to the 15th to get the maximum funding. So we were told we could use donations that came in during the pandemic. We never even counted on that. So we thought we'd wait, figure out how much the donations were. And that's class of 2021. Uh, so anybody who's class of 2021, there will be a West Andrews Scholarship Fund application released for West Andrews Church and our youth department members. As I said earlier, we'll have a sponsorship fund for continuing students uh, on a one-time basis for 2021. I won't be able to do it next year though. So in your next year, students will not be able to get scholarships. I'll remind you after we award this one. We will we'll have a limited amount of awards for non-church member participants in our program, okay? Uh, they'll have a chance to do that. So those are two constituencies. I mean, people are showing up now, it's wonderful, okay? Okay, so now let's go on. Let, again, let me review these activities. I think I, there's the August 18th with Dr. Bennett McBride. Please note it carefully, the times. And also there is already out there on our website, a way to RSVP, but I'll probably be sending out the Zoom link very shortly, if not tomorrow, tonight, then tomorrow, probably tomorrow I'll do it. Sunday the 21st is really Saturday the 21st. It's a live confirmation ceremony and it's 5.30 to 7.15, and it's online only. Then September 15th, the class of 2021 uh, sponsorship program will drop, same day as the other one, which is the Gwen Thomas, which is the award for non-members. I didn't call it Gwen Thomas here, but I probably should have, right? It's the Gwen Thomas Sponsorship Fund Award. Those are two different funds. Uh, of course, the West Angeles Sponsorship Fund you know, it's a little bit little higher the awards, but there are going to be awards given for continuing uh, uh, recipients, okay? Continuing as well as new 21 recipients. I should have said the 21s also. So it'd be continuing from 20, some just received theirs, and then 2021. Remember, the criteria will be the same for the West Angeles Gwen Thomas Award. We're looking at a 3.5 GPA and active on our program. So people who are here, visiting and hearing this, you probably won't uh, be able to get a Gwen Thomas Award, unfortunately, okay? Uh, all awards amounts are based, but you get a lot of great information. That's probably worth just as much. All award amounts are based on budget and active student participation. There's the bullet I was thinking about. And then kind of to hammer that in, we would like the recipients of all the awards to be actually present at our ceremony. Uh, the ceremony is gonna be, uh, as you saw, on the 21st, um, on the 21st, we say the last two sessions down here for non-members, uh, for, for WASFO, for our members, we want our members in the last two sessions. Uh, we think the ceremony is, is mandatory uh, for non-church members. The ceremony is mandatory. If you wanna be a sponsorship recipient of any kind, uh, I think you need to be there. Now, of course, 
by 2020s, uh, this, the ceremony is offered to you because you didn't get one last year. And we felt bad about that because of the pandemic. I probably should stop and see if there are questions. I'm going to look right now. Uh, uh, okay, no chat, no questions. Let me stop and get questions for a minute. Are there actually any questions anyone has so far? Uh, that's a lot of information. Uh, you can keep it for records. Deacon, I have a question. Yes. Hi. So, um, for the life confirmation ceremony, I, I'm not 100% sure Camille will be able to make it because I think Marlon told you she's started working and they have her working on weekends. <laughs> well, so, you have to judge whether that ceremony. Yeah. So we, we. Interesting moment for you. Yeah. So I, I'm, she's trying to get it off, but I don't know if she'll be able to, um, however, Marlon and I can be present and, you know, we can be there, but, you know, virtually but I'm not 100% at this moment that Camille would be able to make it. So right. I, I apologize, but she's working on it. Okay, well, I don't think that'll be a problem. Uh, anybody else, any questions? I won't, that shouldn't be a problem in your case. Let's see, anybody else? Again, I'm, I answer the question based on the history. I'm not answering it based on your question totally. <laughs> Like I said, she she's she's trying, but she just started this new job, so I don't know how willing they're going to be to let her go on a Saturday. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess I'll move forward. Let's continue. Uh, Deacon, I have a question. Oh, okay, go ahead, Sister John. Uh, wait, for, your hand, wait, wait. Your hand was up, and I didn't see it. Yes, it's up. I don't know how to put it down, but it's up. <laughs> sorry. You can put it down. You click the same place to lower your. Okay, hand. just hit. Oh. I just messed up. Anyway, um, my question is for Dr. Bennett, is that for the student only or student and parent? Student parent. Okay. And then I, I, for the- have a choice, I would send, say you, you can't make it, but they can. Okay. Okay. But it's mandatory, of course, for them. We're optional. I think so. I, 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 that's the right way to look at that. Okay. The other question is regarding- cool. Parents who hear it think it's cool. Yeah, it was. I, yeah, I've been through it. it you know what's good. up. You know what's yeah. up. Um, and for the ceremony, um, she's supposed to make a statement or something. I'm uh, vaguely. Uh, uh, it's coming. Okay, great. It's Thank coming. you. I kept it, and I, I decided to keep it real simple too. Okay, great. I, I can't promise it well for the next year's group. <laughs> okay. But it's going to well, be sort of simple, but it, but simple but productive. Mm -hmm. You'll see. Okay. Well, I'm done after this one. So. What. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're not done. You're done with the high school part. That's cool. Right. Yes. All right. Good. And those girls of yours. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, let's go on. Final important steps. So you all have done the high school registration. Most of you. It's just about every, some of you have not. I should probably restate that again. We want every one of you, since you're coming today, you must be interested in getting information for your student while they're on campus to make it likely. This is all about getting it likely that they'll finish college in three and a half or four years. Okay, we've, that's been the purpose of all our sessions, right? Uh, so you wanna register them with our program to get the support of my staff. And I have one and a half staff people, so that's all they're gonna be doing. And me too, is following up on your students that are at your colleges. Cause I know things about a lot of the colleges and I think I can help to make sure they get through the bureaucracy. A lot of them will be on campus the first time. So do register. I know I don't have a person to send you the link, but all you have to do is email me and I'll say, I think all of you probably got it. I sent a link to everyone in class of 2021 to go online and register as a high school graduate or student. But there's a second thing I'm gonna to want them to do in a minute. The youth registration will be free, it's required for on campus support. Again, to remind you, they get academic support, campus assistance guidance, career guidance, and direct um, director campus visits. Like I visit colleges and I hate it when I go, every time this happens to me, I'll show up at a college and I can't, I can't remember everybody there. I don't have a list. So my team has finally solved that problem. And your registration and their registration allow me to text the student and have them meet me. And I can see how they're doing. That can call you and go, I saw them out of sighting. They're doing fine. You know, I can report any issues to you when I visit the college. And we'll be doing more college visitations than ever. Uh, we're all set to go right after the pandemic. Yeah, I've already traveled to some of the colleges already. 
and I'll be in DC actually in September to see the students at Howard and GW, as a matter of fact. Okay, let's go on. Oops. And other counseling and guidance is required, of course. Here's how students are going to register. Let me see if I have, see if the chat is first. You're welcome, Krista. And did I get Christina here yet? No, I did not. Okay, not yet. I don't know what happened. Something happened to her. All right, here's how students register for EEP support. Hey, Kofi, this is what I'm talking about. You can read minds, bro. Here you go. I want the students to send via email their name, cell phone number, and email address. That's what I'm going to want them to do. Okay. Uh, I hope to have Christina here to give you a link to click to do it in Google Forms. So I'm not going to wait. Start sending them to me. I'll just keep forwarding them over to Christina and Quinn. We need to get your name, cell phone number, and email address. It's kind of important for some things I'm going to be doing with students that you might want to participate in. I'll be really interacting a lot more with students. Boy, I learned that during the pandemic that I need to do that. Had some unfortunate things happen that had to wake me up to it, uh, but that's something we're going to be doing. There's a special link I'll do uh, probably tonight, um, or you could just start emailing to me uh, like Kofi did. I think Kofi, you did it somewhere. Wait, how did I get your? Oh, you you texted me, right? I think Kofi texted me. I think that's what he did. But anyway, but you'll have a form by a special link we're going to give you. Just wait for it, parents. Everybody tonight will get that link since you're an attendee to the meeting. Automatically, attendees will get that on recording. People have registered for the meeting, of course. Here's a reminder for parents about FERPA. And we've had an extensive discussion, I think, earlier about FERPA. I mean, it's a big item for us. Hi, Dickie. Sorry. Coffee's here. Who? Who's Did there? You did you say something about Kofi? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kofi, I just I just mentioned to everybody that he texted me his information just recently. That's the same information oh. I just asked for. <laughs> okay. That's okay, sorry. You, you get a link, sister uh, Adu. Just just make it fill out the link. It'll be cool. It just asks for name, uh, phone number, and email address. That's all I need for social media. Everything I want to say. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay we'll do that. We'll yeah, do that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, thanks. Right. This is a reminder, parents, about FERPA. FERPA sounds like some kind of animal in the wild, I know, but I just want to remind you about it. It's, a, it's an unfortunate consequence for our federal laws. The Family Educational Rights Privacy Act is a federal law that affords parents the right to have access to their children's educational records, the right to seek to have the records amended, and the right to have some control of the closure of records. But here's the problem. When a student turns, he might say, well, oh, that's wonderful. Ah, that may, but this all, as you're going to see in a moment, is now out the window because of this part of the federal law. When a student turns 18 years old or enters college at any age, the rights on the FERPA transfer from the parents to the student. And the federal law calls that an eligible student. Okay, and please understand that it's not like high school for that reason, parents. It means that they control their records. A lot of you are thinking, ah, oh, I got that under control. I'm just going to make sure that they sign over that I get their, their uh, grades, all their information. Well, the colleges are not exactly going to cooperate totally because, for example, You'll get his transcript, your student's transcript for the first semester, but you get it in April or March when it becomes part of the transcript. But the grades are issued in December. And you're going to see in a moment, and I told your student already, the ones that were at the meeting, I want them to be transparent. And when they come home at Christmas and holiday, you'll see that in a moment, Christmas and the end of the year, you need to make an agreement that they show you their grades. I mean, you're paying for it. They should do it. But it's because it is federal law that you won't hear about stuff um, because they own their records. When you combine that with HIPAA, they control their health records as well. So this is a time for some conversations, I would think. And then that's the purpose of the next uh, top conversation to have with your students. <coughs> Excuse me. That should be an excellent conversation, probably. Insist on seeing the grades from the first semester 
when the student comes home for the holiday. And then again, when they come home in May or June, the stu students need to, I put need, must feel accountable. That's how people grow. That's how young adults grow when they're accountable, okay? You've got to hold them accountable, parents. You're paying for it. You're taking out loans for it. You must hold them accountable for it. So, and students that I only have one here listening, maybe two, I don't know. You know, you should expect to be transparent with your, with your parents. They're paying for it. All right. So it should be Merry Christmas. How you doing? Where are your grades? It really needs to be that parents. Come on. I need you. I'm trying to protect your investment, especially those who are taking out these large parent loans or taking out parent loans, period. Um, you know, it needs to be that when they come home in May. Hi, have a nice summer, but what were your grades? And you do have leverage, unfortunately, and it is that they need parental approval for the FAFSA. This is why I don't like FAFSA submitted early. I do not like, and you don't have to, it's not going to affect your financial aid till March, right? Don't rush and do your FAFSA in October, trying to get it out of the way. And then you find out that they're not telling you their grades. They're already going for another year. You've already signed for financial aid. They could walk out, live with Annie, and still go to school. So I would really wait. I know this is the toughest part of the meeting. Uh, students that are here, I still love you. But you should desire this accountability. And, and parents need to make them understand they need to feel accountable to their best in school. Okay? Because um, remember, it's their records. It's their ball game now. I hope you're thinking about what I say here. It's very important. Remember, parents, satisfactory academic progress or SAP. The students must keep a 2.5 GPA and 12 credit per semester average to remain in college. Otherwise, the institution will, will put them on probation and then put them out of school. So they go in and have a really bad first semester. Mathematically, it usually means they're going to be coming home at the end of the year and going to two-year college, then returning to four years later. So that's uh, the, these are the, I want to make sure I got these things out of the way. They're very important. It happens on our program, but not as much as in real life. I mean, 85% of our kids finish college in three or four years who hear this meeting. And, and the ones who get this far, it's like 85%. Please remember the oh, society is 44 to 50%, by the way, in society. Half of students do not finish college. Medical needs and support. Think about any special medical needs they have and start thinking about those conversations, what they should look like as they go out the door or when you call them the first week. Then the importance of the sessions that are coming up. This session Wednesday is really important with Dr. Bennett because it's where we teach the student how to academically succeed with their professors. And she covers a lot of things that are extremely important to their successes as, as college students. So I'm gonna really need them to um, be accountable. By the way, something important happened to food. Food just showed up, you guys, so, you know. All right, okay. <laughs> Can't eat it, but it showed up. Um, this is a really important view graph. Um, we talked about this before. It's somewhat uncomfortable, but it's very important. What is HIPAA? I should probably cover HIPAA. HIPAA is the Health Insurance Reportability Accountability Act, 96. It provides for data privacy and security provisions for safeguarding medical information. You guessed it. The students own their medical information too, okay? So you need to have those conversations and they need to feel comfortable with telling you if they're having mental health or other issues. And these are fairly common. About 20% of, well, they say nationwide, 30%. But I've observed about 20% of my students who call me are having some mental health issues. I help them through it, you know, and uh, act on the behalf of the parents whenever they call me to make sure they get the proper support they need. Um, but it's probably a good conversation to have with them so they feel like they can come to you if they're having some any kind of issue they want to talk to you about. And that also goes for local students as well. Students that you might see regularly might be having issues that are very unique to college, okay? Uh, HIPAA in college. Parents cannot be informed of health and mental treatments and the status of students, but in many cases, parent health plans will pay for it. Then that's your end to know about what's going on when your health plan's paying for it. But if the school is managing it, they don't have to tell you. Now, there are schools that if you ask, they'll accidentally have you find out, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <clears throat> there are other schools that if they're aware of an issue you're having, they're having 
your child, if you fill out all their forms and went to orientation, they'll actually say, hey, if I were you, I would call the dorm, the dorm RA this week, this week, just give them a call. Or if I were you, I would call um, XYZ office. I don't even want to scare you to say that, but you get the idea. Remember, Student Health Center is covered under your tuition. So it's great for colds and blues and minor injuries, including injuries in intramural sports. Crisis counseling, they're very good at, colleges are very good at crisis counseling. They're super, okay? They've created really strong mental health organizations, even before the understanding of mental health issues. And some chronic conditions they're very good at, asthma and allergies, et cetera. And that should bring up COVID. All of them have very excellent testing um, protocols, and some are using very modern ABBA testers and very modern test processes. And also they have very, very modern quarantine processes as well. Uh, so a lot of it's covered under your tuition. Now your insurance or some purchase from the college will cover the more serious things. And the colleges are telling you that now, hey, if you want to purchase uh, you know, under the Affordable Care Act some insurance from our state, here's how you do it. Or you just take your insurance and and uh, give them a call. Make sure you do that though. Give your insurance company a call and tell them you have a college student and they'll extend their insurance to cover that student. Or because what'll happen is if they have to go to the hospital and you haven't told them, they'll claim you have to pay for it like they do all the time. But just let them know and I think it will be fine. Okay, that's so now I've told you everything I know about HIPAA. Any questions, that's a good place to stop for questions, I think. Any questions on that uh, HIPAA or FERPA? Purple or HIPAA, right? Welcome to all those who just came in. I appreciate seeing you, Sister Davis. We're gonna continue on here. There will be a video available of what you missed. Just by you coming here, you're getting a copy of the video, okay? If you're in here now, you're getting a copy of the video and the presentation, okay? All right, let's go on. All right, so that covered HIPAA. Let's continue here. Okay, here's the most important student behaviors you want to look for. Usually when you hear the word behavior, it's kind of a negative term, but it really is a positive term here. But here's the student behaviors that you want to look for in your student while they're in college. You can, if, if you listen carefully, you'll hear about it. We have the conversation about, uh, I think about when students come to you with problems. I will talk about that. I don't have a view graph on it. Because a lot of you think there's a certain way you should respond because they are your children after at the end of the day, but they're young adults too. And you just saw that they're, they own their records and they're being treated like society, like they're adults. Yet that means the person that couldn't clean their room regularly or forget, lost their cell phone is now an adult, okay? Two-year college classes while in college. You know, I could have renamed this list. I think I will hereby rename it. These are the important student behaviors to minimize or even lower your parent loan. You can ask me how that works when I'm done. But these behaviors cause the students to do things that make their cost of being in college lower and lower every year. I'm telling you. First of all, the two-year college classes while in college is huge. And we give you a big assist through our partner, Los Angeles Trade Tech. We had this summer over 50 families, 40 or 50 families, had students and we've now had over, oh, I don't know, I think about 90 or 100 of our students have done over 200 classes through trade tech. They're getting college credit. We used to just keep the same thing going. You did it while in high school, you do it while they're in college. You take those general ed classes online. Uh, a new way we're doing things now, about 40% of students can do well online. I know there's 40% that can't, but don't do as well, and that's fine, but 40% can and those students can take classes while they're in, even in college. Like say that college doesn't give you a general ed class, you can take that general ed class online for one of our two-year colleges here in the state of California. They're all accredited and all the colleges will accept the credits. There's only two colleges that will not accept credits and that would be, that I know of, there are probably others, okay? But Morehouse will not accept credits for, or nor do they even accept the credits or the grade from, from uh, two-year colleges. And in some cases, Spelman won't either. But other than that, every school will take credits, okay? You should make sure your student is active on campus. And I like to see students doing something for fun on campus, 
and, and maybe like fun and college spirit, and then something that's co-curricular, like a science club or a math club or an engineering club. But I like the fun stuff too. You know, if they just go to a lot of the games, the football games, or I want students to be active and up and out of their dorm, and meeting people on the campus. I like that sense of balance. Um, that's important. The thing you look for as a parent, that are they active? I look for these things. When I show up to a campus and visit students, I want to see if they're having fun. I realize they're not having fun. They're not active on the campus, not engaged. They're probably going to come home. And that's not something we want to see. Okay. Uh, let's see. Their relationship with God, for some of you, is going to be important. I want to see them joining Christian groups. Uh, what I'm going to be doing, and this is totally voluntary for students, I'll put it out there. On, on, I'm told to say on TikTok and Instagram, and I'm going to be doing some, some videos, some short three and four minute devotionals and words of encouragement and motivation. I've already started filming them and taping them. I should film it. Taping them videos of them right now. I've already done about nine of them already. I'm going to roll those out on September 7th. So every day Pacific time, uh, like five, uh, five Pacific, six Pacific time, when I get up and do my devotional, I'll, I'll make sure I do theirs right before mine. And I'll put them out there for the students when they start their day at back east, whatever school they're in, they can see those. Or they can see them one day late and watch them all. They'll be, again, on my YouTube channel, parents. If you want to see those devotionals, they'll be right there on the same YouTube channel. Go to our website. The website, again, I'll post it at the end during the Q&A, is www.westa-eep.org. Uh, or just Google, somebody told me just Google West Angeles Education Enrichment Program. We'll pop right up. And um, we're visited about 400 times a day. So usually we pop right up on Google. So just go there and uh, wait for the banner across the top to say YouTube channel and just sign up that way. That'd be great. Let me see if somebody's asking me a question here. Okay. So today you see it. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's continue here. Willing to get academic assistance. This is an important student behavior. Are they willing to get help? If they never did it when they were in high school, please encourage them to do it in college. Uh, most students have very well-developed academic centers. And all of them, when I talk to them, when I visit schools for the first time, I always visit academic assistance people. Something they all say is we're not busy enough. We're just bored. They don't come by and get help. They're ready to help them, but they won't come by. They'll do things like help you write essays, do all kind of math stuff. Oh, some of the universities aren't as good at math, which is why I'm going to have a math Saturday workshop. You heard me say it earlier. Again, your student will learn about it if they email me and text me, and you'll learn about it too, the first part of school, the things I'm doing, offering to our students that are in college already, uh, along with the devotional I just talked about, right? Do they have good contact with you? Now, parents, this is a, a little sensitive too. Um, when students go away to college, they go through phases. They'll first challenge themselves to see how long they don't have to call you. Don't interpret, don't misinterpret that. Um, when you call them, just accept with any communication they give you. But eventually they will get back with you. And usually, usually it's going to be, sometimes it'll be to bring you a problem they're having at school. You'll think, wow, I don't hear from you. You're about a problem. It's very important, parents what you do at that time, you know? Um, put it back to them. Wow, what are you gonna do, you know? So I, well, I was calling you up. No, no, uh, I, you know, have you called someone? So done have you called Deacon Wilson? I'm not sure, you know? Have you called him? He's got people that will help you. Encourage them to be able to take care of themselves. That's a wonderful thing you could do that. It's a good way for you to begin the process of becoming a coach and not a parent. And that way, letting go of the parent part, take it on the role of a coach. We've talked about that a little earlier. If you have a deja vu, we did have a session on that. Um, so we want them to have good contact with you. Um, my people will be reaching out. I'm going to assign different ones on my team, different campuses to monitor and call the students up, see how they're doing. But there's nothing like if they contact you. We'll be encouraging them to contact you. When they call me out of nowhere, I always say, say hi to your mom and have you spoke to your parents. I always do that. Encourage them to come home this Thanksgiving and Christmas. 
lot of them think they'll just stay at school. They didn't come home. He makes sure you plan for the ticket for them to come back for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, okay? Um, now, I can tell you that maybe that subsequent years, they won't. They have things they're doing on campus. They have jobs in the cities where they are. They'll build a whole network of support. They may have friends they'll stay with. Just expect that, that that's the kind of thing that will happen. But the first year, I want to see them come home. So they'll be home at Thanksgiving. They'll be home at Christmas. And they'll be home sometimes with spring break. Spring break, I don't think is required. But you might want to do that. And then, of course, at the end of the year, that's the first year. Now, parents, what you want to do is buy your tickets early, uh, get them at a really low cost. Generally, most cities are two-week and four-week cities. It's insane, but I know what cities are. Uh, just buy them early, get them, get them as cheap as you can, good price, and uh, you'll be able to send them back and forth really easy. Most importantly is all the coreless bit of things. So please make her a session. I, I, I don't want to steal her thunder because she does it better than me. The other stuff about how to communicate with your professor, how to succeed in the classroom. She is the best at that. You, you just want to make sure your students have the session. Again, that was the most important student behaviors to get that, get it so that loan stays, gets lower every year or stays low. You might wonder, well, how did these do that? Well, the more connected a student is on campus, the more connected they are with the people on the campus, which means they're going to have a lot of great options for roommates just off campus or in lower cost housing, because they'll be together two and three in a house, things like that. And your, your um, room and board will be extremely reduced. In some cities, it can be reduced up to 30% each year. Um, so you really want to encourage them to get active on the campus to all the things in this relationship with God, willing to get academic assistance, good contact with you. These all impact on the ability to keep your indebtedness as low as possible. A lot of you are really concerned about the amount of your parent loans, but this view graph is extremely important for you. Uh, these are important student behaviors. Uh, let's see if there are any, any questions on that. I want to shout out. Say, any questions? All righty. Feel free to do that if you want to. Almost to the end here. Somebody asked about the preparation for the life confirmation ceremony. I believe that was Sean Hunt. Aha, I remember. And it's going to be extremely um, simple here. Each participant, I want to prepare a life mission statement. I, now, I didn't say write an essay, by the way. A lot of people see the word statement and think I want an essay. I do not need an essay, not, not, not at all. I need one to two sentences. You can email it to me by Thursday at 12 noon. I'll give a nice little Amazon card to the ones that really are the most thoughtful. Um, I didn't close that parenthesis. I got to close that later. Uh, email it to me by Thursday at 12 noon. Uh, read it in the ceremony. You're going to read it in the ceremony. Uh, and uh, I take some time and think it through. You might wonder, what is a mission statement? Here's some corporate mission statement examples. Here's some corporate mission statement examples. Here's targets. To make Target the preferred shopping destination for our guests by delivering an outstanding value, continuous innovation, exceptional guest experience a consistently Filling our expect more, pay less. I need the same thing, you know. Why are you here? Why do you perceive that you're here? What are the things you do well? What do you hope college will do for you? I'm gonna, I've already done a short video on it that you can show to your students when I send out tonight the information to you. That video will be included. Uh, that video will probably help them to, to write their mission statement. Here's Amazon. We strive to offer our customers the lowest possible prices, the best available selection and the utmost convenience. So your students, it's a good time for your students to think about, well, why am I here, you know? They could say, well, to become a really good doctor, that's fine, but how about seeing it as more you helping people? Or why are you here? That's a good time for students to think about that. I have a nice reward for them in the confirmation ceremony. Nicole and then my staff will pick out the ones that were particularly outstanding and they'll do something for them, okay? But I want students to prepare. This is the preparation we want for the ceremony. Uh, now, Sister Sean, because she asks great questions, let's get to, let's, let's go ahead and finish this up first. Please RSVP your youth's attendance for the special presentation during the ceremony. Uh, I, I want to know what students are going to come ahead of time so we can do something special for them. Remember the special date and time. It's at night on Saturday. Sorry about that. And by the way, uh, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, I just had this idea. 
but the, well, I'll talk to you about that, Sister. Um, I think that was Sister. Let me see if I remember that well. Sister Krista asked me uh, in the case that her daughter could make. I have a wonderful alternative to that. So I do the email tonight. I got. I just had a great idea about that. Great. From what you, I'll say it now. I don't care. I'll accept videos of the mission statement too. I'll accept a nice video. But I try to keep it short. You know. Uh, you know, we don't, I said one or two sentences, but they, if they're not available, they can make me a video. It can be a little longer. That's right. Uh, so that's an alternative, Sister Krista, to that. And that way we, she can still uh, kind of virtually be there if she's not there. Uh, I'd like to see as many be there in person. It'd be really cool. I just thought of that just now. I think that'd be just fine. That'd be true for anything. I guess you could be there and still have a video. How about that? That would be okay. But, but send it to me in email, please. If you're going to do a video, I got to get it in an email, right? Uh, that'd be really cool. Same thing with the written state. I need them all in email. That's what I need. Make sure you email them to me at my Holy Thinkers. If they go to West Day, I'll see it. It's better to come to Holy Thinkers. Remember, she's going to send a link for the other information. This is something different. Okay. Uh, just watch your email real close. You'll stay up to date. Uh, it's going to be a special date and time. It's online on Zoom, YouTube Live. You can log in from your campus or hotel if you're away. All right, it will be reported too, but it's probably cool to be there for this day. Saturday, there's a special time. I already cut it by 15 minutes. I bet it I bet it only takes an hour. That's what I bet. I haven't talked to Nicole, but I bet it'll take only an hour to do it. That's what I think. Okay, that's all I had officially. I would like to open it up for questions, and comments, and answers. This is our last official time seeing class of 2020 and 21. But if everything goes right, I'll be interacting with your student, through my people one way or another, through different programs we're offering, through our devotionals. And I'll be interacting with you because I do want to hear from you all about, I want to talk to you about your schools. I wish I could just stop and just do that for each because stuff I'm hearing about all the schools uh, these days all the time. Uh, so definitely um, uh, would love to hear any questions you might have or concerns? Any questions right now? Let me general mention to others, or you just want to know. I can answer those now too. No, nobody. Oh, nobody. Am I that good? I don't think it's just Lynette. Am I that good? This is Lynette. I'm sorry. I, here, here I am. I'm sorry. I had to unmute. No, but I will be sending um, an email. I'll have both boys send you an email with their colleges because I would like you to speak with them about Sac State and Grand Canyon. Yeah, I want so to. Can find out. Yeah. Yes, please. And 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 I so hope that um, you would have the opportunity to uh, visit with them when you make your trips. I, I know at least the Grand Canyon. I know you're there, but hopefully Sac State as well. Sac State this year. The reason is because I have four or five students that are going there for the program. And they're not here. Oh, remember I promised you guys, thank you, Sister Lynette, you reminded me. I am going to, as soon as my team gets back and down, a couple of them are traveling on me. We're going to get you a list of the students from your school. So I think that will really help you. Oh, beautiful. In yes. both of your cases, both your boys, at least can make a first contact with each other. Yes. I'll try to. And, and then. And then I would also like to, uh, I'll put it in the email because I had some uh, financial aid questions for you as well. Please do. Yeah, those are the kind of questions. I've set aside time to hear. This is the time you're don't do anything about that. That's all. Okay. I remember I got Nicole on the after school. I just finished summer program. I don't travel on purpose this time of the year because I'm trying to get all the students up to their schools. That's why when I do my first school visits there in September, so I know Sister Jasmine knows I'm going to be in D.C., seeing the Howard and GW students, the 17th through the 19th in that area, for example, I'll be there. And for the first time, I think I actually have time to deal with my local students, the ones that go to campus, you know, at Long Beach and LA, you know, you know the drill, LMU, y'all know the drill, Dominguez Hills, et cetera, okay? Anybody else? Deacon, can I ask you a question when everybody else drops off um, regarding the ceremony and Amanda? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I sent you a, a message about that. All so, right, hang, circle back. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you all. I see, sister, I see a lot of folks here who are faithfully following the crazy things I've been saying for years. They showed up today, and I'm so happy to see them. 
Yeah, sister, is that Fennell? Sister Fennell, is it? I probably said her name wrong. Probably where I was messed up. Hello, yes. I but said it I'm, right? No, it's Fennell. Oh, I didn't do too bad. <laughs> what school is yours going to? Uh, UC Santa Cruz. Really? Did you do the registration on my site? You tell me that? Did you tell me that? Yes, I did. I sent that information. So you're going to be That's here with Rachel real soon, who's an alum graduate of UC Santa Cruz. As a, a lot of you know are not, that she's a worker on my program. I'm going to okay. be so I really got some things to tell you. We want to know, and you got other members that are in our program that are sending to get to Santa Cruz. Oh, that's great to hear. You guys want to talk to each other, probably. We're going to, this is the week where we do that kind of, next, over the next two weeks, we're doing that kind of stuff. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. Thank you. And Sister Davis, you won't be lost. I'm going to lose you, okay? But we're going to talk on the phone. I'm going to actually go ahead like I usually do. And I'm going to have, I don't have no help here today. I'm not doing too bad. And I have no help. Uh, I'm going to send you guys two things I think would be useful to you. Uh, stand by. I'm tripping. There's the chat. Okay. I'm going to put in the chat window uh, for all of you my cell phone number. So, Sister Davis, I'd like for you to call me in about 45 minutes. Okay. There's my number. You guys know how open I am. Here's my email address. And then I'm going to give you that website address. If you're ever in doubt about what's happening, we're doing a decent job. Uh, not as good as we could, but we're doing a decent job. And I'm working on that. Um, this organization is running different than it's ever run. My people are getting used to how the differences I'm doing right now. I'm very, very uh, much oriented toward the website, social media, et 